Hello and welcome to the Gameline Wales Online's Daily Rugby Debate Show. I'm your host, Ben James, and today we're joined by Andy Howe, a very special guest, Westgate's Alex Bywater, a former colleague of ours. How are you doing, Alex? Very well, thank you. And yourself, Andy? You yeah, I'm quite good, thanks, Ben. Yeah, I am. It's great not to see Alex uh, back in the building. You know, me and him have been on a few good trips in the uh, in the past. <laughs> you know, I can remember a few a couple of instances. We had a great time at the 2015 World Cup when we were staying up in Richmond, Alex. Happy memories, Andy. <laughs> Happy memories. I'm sure, for legal reasons, we won't get into them too far. But uh, just remind, of course, uh, if you have any questions or comments, this is your show, and we'll answer them uh, if you get them in the comments below. So let's um, kick off then. What have you made of the Six Nations so far, Alex? From a Welsh perspective, it's been a bit of a damp scrub. The last yeah. two games, obviously, t- two defeats has been been disappointing, and I think it's been a case of near misses, hasn't it, for Wales so far? Yeah. Fine margins. They've been going okay, I think, you know, so far it's been all right, but obviously two defeats is not great. Alan Wynne-Jones has spoken about the fact that Test Rugby is a a results business and they haven't been getting the results. So it's disappointing they're out of the running uh, with two games to go, Um, but they can't let up. Obviously England at Twickenham is going to be a huge one, isn't it? Indeed it is. Um, And you want to start Lewis Rees Samuel, don't you, Andy, in that one? You've been calling for it non-stop. Sure, should have started against Italy in the opening match of the tournament. The, uh, you know that was a perfect opportunity to blood him, see if he was uh, you know up to it for the rest of this uh, uh, championship. So uh, I, you know, with the injuries they got, so, and well, Alex just said about the situation Wales are in in the championship, might as well play him against England. Now he's used to against playing against those players, scores loads of tries against them. I suggest they'd be fearing more than he'd be fearing him more than they'd be fearing them. Is that something you'd agree with? Would you would you ring the changes? I mean, England away at Twickenham. I disagree. I mean, obviously, a, a lot of it is based on fitness, isn't it? We don't know. You know, yesterday there was a positive update from Wales on George North and Liam Williams. We'll have to wait until next week, really, won't we, to see if they're definitely fit. I mean, if George North is fit, I would start him and Johnny McNichol on the wings. Obviously, Josh Adams is out of the tournament, and I'd probably have Liam Williams on the bench at best, in my yeah. opinion. Well, why would you start with Johnny McNichol when his defence has been found wanting in his championship? I just think he's got. I think he's a much better operator at the level. He's had more experience. I just think it's a bit of a gamble to th- to throw him in. Do you, do you think it was a gamble when they threw George North in as an eighteen-year-old? Yeah, sometimes gambles do pay off, don't they? But I just Wales got history of gambles paying off when you look at the greats of Welsh rugby who started yeah. at a young age. Yeah, yeah, but that yeah, they also capped Tom Pryde at the yeah, similar but that's age. That's a rare, rare exception. That probably knocked him fairness. back. That probably knocked Tom Pryde back a few years. I don't think so. The Ospreys weren't picking him at the time. So I think the, uh, the, hand, the Ospreys handling of him had to be questioned. Plus, he also had so many injuries, man. That's the face. He was involved with Wales until he started getting injuries. And then Gatlin as well tried to bring him back afterwards, and he got more injuries. I think the interesting thing with Rhys Sam is how much he's actually been around with Wales. Yeah. So he's actually not playing for Gloucester this weekend because he's ill. Um, but before that, he, obviously, as a Gloucester player, he has to go back in the fallow weeks. And that's not actually helped him at all. So is his damn bigger? Yeah, but they're they're they're, they're, they're two di- very different kettles of fish, aren't they? Andy, you know, Dan think, Biggers, eighty odd caps, yeah. first choice fly half at the moment. Yeah, but fly half's a key position. Wing is not such a key position, with all due respect. Yeah, I, I can see that, and I, there is an argument to say if he came he came in, he'd do very well. But I just think they've invested in McNichol. I think you know if he's on the bench, I think if if North and Liam aren't fit, and he came on the bench, he could do a good job. I just think it's a bit of a gamble. We got to remember he's, he's well. He's just turned nineteen, hasn't he? I was about to say eighteen, but he's just yeah, turned if nineteen. If you're good enough, you're old enough. Whether you're his age, Alan, when Jones's age, surely. I think. Look I, at that French team last week. How young they were. Yeah. I. Th- I you on, missed man. this, haven't you? You've missed uh, <laughs> Andy constantly disagreeing with everything you said. I just. I think the one thing I agree with you on though is he should have been involved against Italy. I think if he was going to be involved in this tournament, actually in the matchday squad rather than as. I guess a learning experience. He should have been involved in in that game. I, I think was, if they did pick him for this game, there should be less pressure on him for England than, than if they give him his debut against Scotland the following week because everyone expects Wales to beat Scotland, yet they don't expect us to defeat England. Okay, uh, moving obviously in your line of work at Westgate, you followed Wales very closely under the last regime with Gatland. What, what have you made of Wayne Pivak following him equally closely in these sort of opening few weeks of his tenure? Well, I think he started pretty well, didn't he? Obviously, there was the Barbarians game, which was a bit of a, 
a friendly bit of fun really that I think you can probably discount that I think he, he's, his selection for Six Nations squad was, was pretty good I think Tompkins although he's had Nick Tompkins although he's had a couple of mistakes um, I think by and large he's looked quite promising if you look at the bigger picture he's still a young player uh, so I think that was a very canny selection. Will Rowlands went off the went well off the bench the other day, so that was a canny selection. I think it will take time. I think that people have to give them patience. Um, cool. Yeah, but they but they're coming from a position where they were Grand Slam champions last season, reached the semi-finals of the World Cup. It's not as though they 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 they've come in like Gatland did when Wales had exited the World Cup at the knockout stage the previous uh, one. They're coming in from a position of uh, strength. But is that yeah. not easier to? If you're a new coach who wants to bring in new ideas, surely it's easier to come in with a clean slate. With a well, with a team that say like Gatlin came in, it was an underperforming team that had very little structure but had a lot of very good players. So he could just come in and, and give a simple message, and it didn't take much to get it on the right track. Pivax yeah. tr- wants to change things quite radically in terms of evolution, and yet he's got all this expectation behind him because of what Gatlin's done. So it is his revolution too radical when Wales already got firm foundations in place well this is <laughs> this is what makes me laugh so there's been obviously two back to back defeats <laughs> and now people want yeah. gain line carriers one out rugby <laughs> straight up the ju- straight up the up the middle um, I hear Jamie Roberts is playing well in yeah, South Africa yeah he is playing well in South Africa <laughs> um, but I think there's a serious I mean, we're having a laugh but there is a serious point to that like for 10 years 12 years Wales was incredibly successful under Warren Gatland he had his approach and my opinion is whether you detract from the style or not it was incredibly successful and I guess he picked players that he knew would suit the game plan at the time I think if you look at the Chiefs whether they're they're playing at the moment he can play an expansive game plan maybe he thought that the Wales players he had at the time weren't suited to that and he adapted his thing to be successful I think Wales under Pivak are trying to play a new style of rugby and they have got the players to do it if you look at that try, um, Thomas Williams against Ireland, that was a lovely try, wasn't it? And that maybe was a sign of hopefully what they can do on a more consistent basis. Yeah. Do you think he's uh, going to take a bit of time to get the players on message? Or you know, you said about Alan Wynne Jones' comments um, that you know, are they all on side yet at the minute? You know, he said that uh, you can't always play pretty rugby to win. I think they're on side. At the at the at the launch of the tournament, he was saying, you know, I think I think the quote. Don't want to misquote him, but the, to paraphrase, it was something like, you know, you can either embrace change and stay, yeah. or basically reject the change and not be a part of it. Um, and I think I think they're all on board. You know, there's a, there's a heavy Scarlet's influence in the squad, lots of which played under Pivac. I think they're talking to the players on a fairly regular basis. I think they're embracing it. But I, I can see your point that you know the senior players have got to step up, and that has been driven, I think, by from the likes of Alan Wynn since the France game. It's going to be tough, though, isn't it? Now, yeah. I guess, I guess yeah. one of the issues is maybe the breakdown, which is going against Wales. Uh, and uh, we've got a question here from James Davis, not that James Davis. Um, is this him? Yeah. What are the chances of Josh Navidi being fit for the England game? That's why it's not that James Davis, because he wouldn't be asking that question. Yeah, he can be. You know, they can say he's fit, but he's only been match fit because he's already played a game match since the World Cup. That was his second hamstring injury. He's already went out the World Cup the hamstring injury. He's got another hamstring injury, which he had before the first game. Yeah. OK, you play him against Italy, there's a chance that our hamstring will go again and he could be out for God knows how long. You know, mm. might even he could rupture, he might even need an operation. So wouldn't it be, in Wales' situation, Alex, would it be foolhardy to pick him? Especially when you look at their back row. I agree. navidi has been brilliant, hasn't he, for 18 months, two years. I thought he was missed really badly in Ireland. The way that game panned out, the, the way the likes of CJ Stander sort of dominated that game physically, he was a big miss there. But he's had a couple of hamstring injuries. Do we really? Do Wales really want to throw him back in? I, I think I think it's a bit of a risk, especially, you know, I think Ross Moriarty's gone well since he's come back into the team. I thought he had quite. He was one of Wales's better players against uh, France. Justin Tipperick's playing very well. Toby Falatau's getting better and better each game. I just think Navidi and Liam Williams are in the same boat. Do you, do you feel Wales' uh, breakdown issues have been caused by Wales committing so, so few numbers to the breakdown? And, and the opposition have targeted their breakdown because they've done their homework. I think Sean Edwards and France did, didn't they? For sure. And Ireland did, didn't they? Yeah. And I think, you know, the Ireland game, I think Aaron Wainwright maybe didn't have the best game there. And physically, you know, I thought he, I thought he was dominated a little yeah. bit in that game. And I was having a quite interesting conversation with 
your colleague, my ex-colleague Simon Thomas, after the France game, talking about the breakdown, he was saying that... Did you fall asleep when he was talking? Uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but just after he'd made a valid point, which was basically two of the most important players at the Scarlets when Pivac was coaching, they had the success, mm. were James Davis yeah, and Tagburn yeah. in terms of their breakdown work. And he was saying, do you think that Wales have the right balance at the moment? There's an argument to say, maybe mm. not if they're going to play this fast-paced offloading game, do they need a more lighter, more mobile second or someone like James Davis? But not that James Davis, <laughs> but James <laughs> Davis is... And the other thing as well with the Scarlets is because they never used to commit many to the ruck because they wanted to keep so many people on their feet. So if they, yeah. if they got the ball or the opposition made a mistake or they got a turnover, they had, they had more numbers than the opposition. So I think they've tried to take that into the international arena. Of course, they're playing against better quality players, probably bigger, quali- yeah. bigger players as well. Is it more difficult to do it? Yeah, I think what Byron Hayward and Sam Warburton have both talked about is with, with Short Edwards... It's not really you're not really taught to make decisions. You you're taught a structure. I think they want to teach the players to read the game a little bit more and make decisions. So they want Sam Warburton wants his players looking at the breakdown picture and deciding whether to commit or whether not. And I think maybe that's going to take time because obviously you know Sean Edwards is just getting a line, blitz, mm, smash everything, smash yeah. everything that moves. This is maybe teaching the players to sort of see, see for themselves. Which do you think? Do you think that was necessary? Do you think, you know, I, I think everyone agrees that Wayne Pivac's trying to change the style and attack. Yeah. I think everyone, by and large, is behind that as an approach. But it, would it, is it really necessary to change the defensive approach that much? No, I think with, Probably a, break, not. with a breakdown, I don't think you need it. Teach yeah. people like uh, Tip Rich and Falatel when to go in on a ball. The top players, they know that. Mm. You know, all the, probably, top, all the top flankers in the world. Probably they, more your outside, you know, your, your other players. So, like, George North likes, likes to go well, for a nibble at a breakdown. A Tompkins goes to... Props, you know, anyone now is a breakdown sort of specialist. So yeah. it's just teaching them to sort of to know when or when not to sort of fire your bullets. You touched on it there, though, Andy. Do you think that style of play, which you can play at probably Pro 14 or European level, is uh, can work at international level given the increased physicality, the shorter time? You know, I think that New Zealand have probably made it work in the past, but you know they've been they've had exceptional uh, teams. I think yeah. you know the time will tell by the world's color players who can who can do that. Yeah, there's a, there's a certain irony to this conversation, isn't there, with the whole <laughs> we should maybe change, but bring back the more physical <laughs> approach. Yeah, there's no guarantee they're going to win with a physical. No, approach, I know. Well, n- you know. Well, not against England. You're not going to beat England by trying to run through them. No. That's, that's why I want well, people like Rhys Hammond now playing. People yeah. have good feet to try and beat them with their footwork. You know, we've seen in the last couple of years the year problems Hanscom has caused them with his footwork yeah. Yeah. and speed. Okay, um, let's take another question. And this one from Daniel Bevan. What's up with Ken Owens? He doesn't seem to be the same player. Is it time for someone else? It's been, I, been there a while, hasn't it? And he's yeah, sort of a mainstay, and he's been consistently good, hasn't he? So he just, he's been consistently good for, for a while. I, I'm not sure. It's I think it's a bit harsh to say. Is it time for someone else? I think if you look at the the Wales hooking uh, resources, Elliot D's been injured, hasn't he? In this yeah. campaign, you know, he's a very promising player. As is Ryan Elias, but I think at the moment, I think Ken would probably say by his own admission, maybe he hasn't quite hit his his usual heights. I think you could probably say that about a couple of the Wales players. Yeah, I think you need him in the team or to start against England. I think you yeah. still need... Ex- you know, I'm all for changing some of the backs because it's easy to do that, but I think you need the spine of the team at, at forward. With Ken, man, he is, you know, he is 33, so he's probably not going to be around for the next uh, World Cup. But they've certainly got to be looking at who's going to uh, uh, replace him long-term. I mean, they've got to do in the squad yeah. as well. Yeah. I like Elliot D, though, don't you? Yeah, I think he's a really yeah. dynamic player. I'm not yeah. sure if he's better off the bench to start in mind. Because he's so dynamic, yeah. he's a very skillful player and got good vision and, and stuff like that. And they obviously rate Dewey Lake to call to call him up, and he's you know he's highly regarded. Mm. Did well in the twenties, but I think it's you know it's too early to to try and move Ken Owens on. I mean, <laughs> yeah. to go to go to Twickenham with Ryan Elias starting, I think would maybe be a be an unwise move. Yeah, uh, so, Alex, you you know um, are you giving uh, Wales any chance of winning on your patch, Twickenham? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, he dropped the bomb there. Uh-huh. Um, I think it'll be. I think it'll be very tough. I think the, the the thing that would worry me if I was Wales is, regardless of the style of play that we've talked a lot about here, is the fact that Ireland. I thought dominated them physically in Dublin, and I know Ireland weren't at their best at Twickenham, but I thought England did a job on them in that area. 
and I think that's the trouble that Wales have had at, at Twickenham in recent so what, times. So what's happened to Wales' physicality since the uh, since the World Cup? I don't think it's been a massive change. I think you know Wales under Gatland went to places like Ireland and mm. uh, and got dominated oh, yeah. and got dominated yeah. physically. I think I think it was maybe brushed over a little bit in the aftermath of the Ireland defeat most recently that Wales often struggle there. Um, so it's, I think some of the problems that the physicality and being dominated in that area aren't necessarily new just under the Wayne Pivak era. Got a question here from Colin Smith which is very relevant today. Um, how likely is this Six Nations to just be scrapped? I mean that this coronavirus is dominating headlines. Yeah. Obviously well I, I think in the Wales game them. as it currently stands will definitely be on and I think uh, Wales against Scotland will definitely be on but um you know the Italian game, so um, I think uh, Italy England will be off, yeah. and um, you, you know it's going to depend what happens as well. I guess um, in Britain over the next uh, week or two, you know how much of it uh, takes place. I mean, if the Six Nations is scrapped in Britain, that means your Premiership football and everything's going to be scrapped. I would imagine. So yeah. it's not a decision the authorities will want to take in there, but it's got to be a, a concern because you look. Let's use Italy as an example. It's got the. Uh, uh, most cases outside of uh, Asia, and they went up by fifty percent in uh, in twenty four hours. So six hundred odd people at the last count are suffering from it, and we've got a case now in uh, in Wales. Yeah, I guess, well, it's, a, it's a slightly difficult one for us to answer. <laughs> yeah, none, none of us, uh, none of us, are medical experts, but I think you know we all love the Six Nations of rugby, but there's got to be a degree of perspective here. And you know, I, th- I think I think the home game will, sorry, the Twickenham home game for England against yeah. Wales will take place, but. The Italy England game, but I'm sure that'll be off. That'd be another, another robbing of Sergio Parisi of another farewell uh, appearance. But uh, he's not blessed with luck. No, he's not blessed uh, with luck. No. Okay, let's uh, let's have a, a look at a few comments as we sort of hurtle towards the end. Uh, Michael Hart Jones says 100% agree with Andy. There's a first for everything. That's his comment. That I'm means not that's saying the first that. time perhaps he's agreed with me. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> saying that. Yeah, uh, I wasn't saying that. Um, Christopher Jones uh, also agrees. He says, "Give the young uns, the young guns, uh, a go." Um, and Jackie Morris wants to know why Halfpenny's not kicking the goals now. Do you know why I think uh, my theory that is because they uh, see Liam Williams as the first choice fullback and Halfpenny as a sort of uh, reserve player, and so they've been having bigger doing the goal kicking because they see him as the first choice ten. So uh, you know they won't, perhaps they didn't want a situation where half Penny's been playing, he's been kicking the goals, and then if Liam Williams is uh, fit and he decided to pick him, then you got to switch to Dan Bigger, you can give him Dan responsibility. I mean they're both top class goal kickers, aren't they? Yeah. You know, it's difficult. Uh, I think Wales are so best. lucky, aren't they, yeah. to have those sort of two goal kickers? And I think Bigger's the sort of player where if he has that responsibility, he loves it, doesn't he? He yeah. loves that responsibility. He loves. He loves being, any responsibility, doesn't he? Yeah, he to and it's t- it takes it, t- it helps take his game to the next level. Yeah. And he, unless he was excellent in the World Cup, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah from, from know, a kicking if perspective. Get, if you go back to the last time the Ospreys won the pro, whatever it was called back in those days, out in Leinster, Shane Williams scored a try a couple of minutes ago out in the corner, and you knew that Dan Bigger was going to land a conversion because that is Dan Bigger in that situation. Just on this point, though, give the young give the young guns a go. There's a bit of sort of anger that Wales have lost two games in a row do people really want to send a young inexperienced team to Twickenham and well, get beat by 20-30 points should, should, though, should they move Tompkins to 12 where he's played a lot for Saracens and look good at 12 when he came on yeah. against Italy the, I think the first or second time he came on and the second time perhaps and bring in Owen Watkin who is a good defender at 13 and have a look at that combination would that be solid enough to face England I think so I really like Tompkins um, I've, give, I've given him a couple of mixed uh, mm. ratings <laughs> to be honest I'll be honest about that but so for example the France game I think there was a break early on in the 13 channel wasn't there that was you know, potentially yeah, yeah, yeah. he was culpable for that but I thought he really grew into the game after that and then it was just unfortunate that, that his was the intercept pass but I really like him as a 12 he's, or 13 he's busy and he yeah. made in that game I think he made 121 metres yeah. so he's doing things and he's and what I like, what I like, yeah. So he's he's made a couple of mistakes, and he missed the mm. tackle on Lamo mm. for the the try in Ireland. But I th- I thought he really Knuckled brushed that off, yeah. knuckled down or whatever. And I think he's an, I think long term he's he's definitely Wales's centre long term in my in my opinion. Do you think he's better suited twelve or thirteen? 
Well, I'm, I, obviously, I'm seeing that very much twelve. But, yeah. but you know, I, I you know, so I think he can play that position. Why well, I think he could be twelve is he's. I know that pass going to set me, but he is good at fixing defenders and yeah. he straightens and passes and puts. Uh, you know, he can put people away. So I think he's got a passing game. He's capable of playing twelve. Yeah, I think while we're talking about centres and defence, I think Wales are missing Jonathan Davis. Chronic, yeah, aren't, chronic, aren't they? Yeah, massively so. And, you know, if he if he was fit, I'd be really excited by a combination of. Tompkins at 12 yeah. and Jonathan Davis at 13 I think Hadley Parks has been okay what have you, what have you made of him? Yeah he's been solid I think he's had a good championship yeah. yeah he's been solid as he is you know I think he's been better in the championship than he has for the Scarlets uh, But you want him dropped? No I'm not no I'm not I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm looking, looking at the yeah, I'm, looking right. at the, him I'm looking at the point of view because of his age profile and where Wales are in yeah. the championship I'm thinking towards the next World Cup like France are so and I think this is a good opportunity to play a couple of players in the um in the backs, so I'm not advocating a uh, big change in the uh, forwards, no. but I think this is, uh, you know, why not play Jared Evans at 10 up there? I mean, <laughs> he's 23. He's three years older than Roman Antemak. You're not in the edge, so that says to me straight away that you think and Jared Evans is never going to make it as an international player. You know, if you get sure, France, that fan, your fans team, yeah. beat England, Antemak, 20. A lot of us, the centre, 20. And on son. Dupont, yeah. 23. You can reel them all off. Aldrich, I think he's 22, best player in the championship. I understand that, but Intermax is a far better player than Jared Evans. Is he? Yeah. Oh, far right. better. Oh, okay. Far better. Yeah. But so you, why, so why? You, why? You, would consi- you would consider resting or dropping Dan Bigger for. I got him on a bench like last season when he came on and did a brilliant job. Oh. Why, why <laughs> You're why? mad. You're well, mad. <laughs> but, that's the, but you've got people like Quick Feed, uh, Jared Evans, post Ireland and France problems. In both matches, oh, and I thought to actually, him. I thought he worked really well when Bit Bigger moved to twelve in that last game. You yeah. could, uh, you could hack it, but big, you know, he could play bigger at twelve. Good, good point here. Obviously, uh, David Reese says Wales are missing Patchell as well, um, which they are. But remember, two years ago, Patchell went to yeah. Twickenham. Yeah. yeah, took him a while to get over that because mm. that was a tough yeah. day at the office for him, and it, it took him probably until the summer tour to really regain his confidence mm. on the test stage, mm. which is what you risk doing if you. You know, give, give a few yeah. youngsters a. Uh, Eddie Jones got into him, didn't he? Yeah, if Eddie Jones if you got remember. into him, and he won that one well. And uh, as you know, when he moved Anscombe to outside half in that game, he threatened to turn a match, didn't he? Uh, yeah. He was um, running from full back. Uh, you know, he scared England. Um, yeah, but if you if you're not prepared to chance these guys at some stage, you're never going to pick them. I think he's given them a chance. The fact that they're coming off the bench, that they're even involved at all. Mm. So it's about. I take your point. Wales have got to look to the to the next World Cup because there are players there like Ken, Ken Owens, Hadley Parks, Alan Wynn, Win. mm-hmm. Dan Bigger probably yeah. probably won't be around. Half penny, half penny. Mm. Tip Rich. It's a lot of them. They got their April or each pro for the average age. The team is only twenty nine. I guess. Yeah, uh, that's the thing. Uh, I suppose if you look at the, where the next year or so for Wales, of they're, they're going to play Japan. Do you, do you think then a pivot is actually put under pressure to get results because he's only got a two plus two year deal? If they give him a straight four-year deal, which is the reason Sean Edwards says he left yeah. Wales because they wouldn't give him a straight Sean a straight four-year deal, that he would have given Pivot more job security and and a chance to experiment earlier. Potentially. Potentially, he has talked from the outset though, Pivot hasn't he, about that balancing act. We want to win in the here and now, but we have to look two, three years down the line, but that's a very different, that's a very, sorry, very difficult balancing act to have. Because I was going to say, if you look at the next year for Wales, Wales never lost three in a row in the Six Nations under Warren Gatland. So Twickenham is going to be a tough game. If they lose that, that's three in a row. That's another on, probably a bit of an unwanted record. You'd hope they'd beat Scotland at home. I think, you know, most Wales fans would be hopefully confident of winning that one. Then there's the, the Japan game in the summer. If it's on, if it's on, yeah. uh, obviously I guess that's that's one to think about, isn't it? Really moving forward, but then you've got two tests with New Zealand, which are going to be tough, yeah. and then no, four. Hang on, that's a brilliant time to play the All Blacks because they are starting off a major rebuilding project. Okay. They've lost most of their team, so this is a great time to play them. If Wales were going over their Six Nations champions, I think they'd be in with a real uh, chance. We've obviously got to see what happens in their next two games but in not. Six Nations. But they're not. Don't forget, it's the All Blacks' first game. First game and a new coach with a load of new players. There's not, there won't be many left on the World Cup. You can still see that it's going to be a difficult game, though, surely. Yeah. My, my, no, point, I'm, I'm, my point is there, this is going to take the All Blacks a bit of time to gel. Yeah. Especially, you know, the first set. Wales are catching them at the right time, that's what I'm saying. 
you know, it's like Wales, the closest I've seen Wales come in my lifetime to come, uh, uh, in a, okay, in a pro era, is um, to beat in uh, New Zealand when they came here with a new look team in the autumn of um, uh, 2004. 2004. You know, mm. Richie McCall was his debut, something like that. You know, Wales come so close to winning that day. Yeah. Hmm. I just think that the, the, the point that I was trying to make is when do they look to the future? Mm. If, you, if they've started with a run of defeats, which is looks like it could happen at the moment, when is he going to find the time well, to, to if, experiment, if keep, especially keep, with the pressure of If they keep results. losing, of course, they will have to make changes anyway, won't it? So it yeah. will perhaps be a natural evolution. Yeah. So you sound, to me, Alex, you sound, you and your man who works for the national newspapers on a regular basis usually respect it and all but it seems to me you're quite pessimistic about Welsh rugby no I'm not that I'm not, I'm not that pessimistic mm. I think it's quite an exciting time for, and I think there was always I think most fans would have looked at this Six Nations and realised it's going to be quite tough for Wales I think I think the France game was disappointing I think if you ask most Wales fans what they would expect from the Six Nations with the new era and new coach I think if you'd said they win their three home games yeah, yeah, yeah. Italy France and Scotland with two tough games, Ireland and England away. I think most people, I think no, no Wales fan wants to say, oh, we'll take that, losing two games, especially yeah. as defending Grand Slam champions. But I think that would have been, in my opinion, a pretty decent campaign. I was expecting them to lose in uh, Ireland, but I yeah. think Ireland uh, in, in transition as well, but not great because the Wales haven't had a good record over there in the Gatland. Yeah. Uh, but then I was expecting them probably to beat France. Yeah. Uh, I know Wales got a few, quite a few injuries, but they thought they could beat England as well and win the title. But, uh, yeah, you know, now it's changed a bit. Well, yeah. They could still... Well, who knows what's going to happen with the other games. That's the thing. That's going to throw Indeed. the cat amongst the pigeons, isn't it? Indeed. Uh, well, it's been a pleasure having you on, Alex. Uh, I hope you enjoyed sitting next to Andy yeah, Hell for Getting grilled, uh, yeah. A bit more. Uh, yeah. We've been on a good church then when we went to Bristol, London Welsh, when Bristol, they had all that money and they were trying to win promotion and uh, and uh, <laughs> and Bristol and, uh, and London Welsh mugged them, didn't they? Twice. Yeah. yeah. Oh, What's the best thing about that? My car parking that day, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, it's brilliant car parking because, of course, he's like you, Ben. You're both farming mads from farming background. But uh, I have seen Ben driving, by the way, uh, Alex, when we went to Bristol Airport last year in his Ford uh, Fiesta or Fiesta, Escort, yeah. and he stunk a sheep, it was all A and all in the back. But you handled that little Fiat, what was it, Fiat 500? Like yeah. a tractor, didn't it? You? you all sat handle on the steam with that. How, you parked, how did you park in that space? <laughs> We're digressing here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Slightly slanderous end to the, uh, the podcast, as far as I'm concerned. Um, that's it for today's game line. We'll be back again on Monday, same time, same place. Thank <laughs> you.